Howdy folks, Captain Chris here. Uh, as I promised, I'm going to do you guys a uh, little how-to video about the Bonita. Um, New River Inlet uh, has been producing some of the best Bonita fishing for the past five or six years. The numbers of the fish that show up there are, you know, about the best along the coast here in North Carolina. And, and it's been that way for about five or six years, you know. Previous years of that, they've been a little bit south, they've been a little bit north, but they seem to be hanging right on the Divers Rock area out of New River. Only three or four miles, it's a great opportunity for people, you know, with smaller boats to be able to get out and, you know, catch some of these fish. Um, you've, you've probably heard blood buckets and things like that, where some people have said that Bonita don't taste good. Well, they've never tried them. Um, I have tried Bonita, and it's a great fish to eat. I've cooked it alongside yellowfin. A lot of people had a hard time telling the difference. Uh, in addition to that, they also make great tuna salad. You can boil the fillets and flake it up, and it, it makes a really good tuna salad. My wife enjoys it uh, quite a bit. Um, we're getting into that time probably within the next week or the next two weeks that the Benita are going to show up here. Uh, I heard they were at 10 miles the other day, and they're on their way. So when they come inshore in the spring, they're mainly feeding on glass minnows. And these glass minnows range anywhere from you know, this big to this big. Sometimes they get keyed in on hatchet fish, which are a little bit of a wider bodied fish. And you need to try to match the hatch. Size is usually much more important than color when it comes to selecting baits for Bonita. Uh, they'll generally key in on one size bait. And if you're fishing, you, you might have heard the old adage, you know, bigger bait, bigger fish. That doesn't always work, especially with Bonita and Spanish mackerel. Because they'll get keyed in on one size bait and that's all that they'll eat. And uh, if you fish with something that's much bigger or much smaller than what they're keyed in on, you can cast into a pot of fish and not have any luck. So one of the best ways to be able to locate Bonita is just go out New River and head out about three or four miles. I'll throw the GPS coordinates up here for you guys to take a look at um, for Divers Rock area. And on your way out, make sure to keep a good eye out for birds working or fish slashing. Uh, Usually bonita fishing is an early morning game. You get out there early and find the fish and a lot of times it's over by noon. There might be an afternoon bite too, but generally the morning bite is much better. Um, a lot of times you'll get out there and sometimes you might not see the fish busting on top. You might not see birds work in the schools just because the bonita haven't had a chance to corral the minnows up and push them to the surface just yet. So you can try blind trolling for these bonita in areas that you think they might be. Uh, there's a few good baits that I'll show you in this late, in a little bit of the later section on how to tie things up. You know, Zuri crystal minnows are a great bait for trolling for them, and Clark's moons. You can troll for them just like you would for Spanish mackerel. So if you've got that down, you can already catch Bonita. One thing I do want to emphasize is that if you do find fish breaking on the surface, or if you do find fish by birds working the baits, don't troll through the school. If you tro troll through the school, you'll scatter the fish out, you'll drive them deep, and it'll be much harder to locate them again, plus you'll make a lot of folks mad while you're out there. You're usually not out there by yourself when the Bonita run starts really well. So make sure you always try to keep away from the busting baits at that time. So you can motor up to them slowly, cut the engine off, and start casting into the, into the busting fish. Uh, some of the great baits to use for that would be diamond jigs, Don's jigs, gotcha plugs, they're all great baits to use for Manina. I'll show some of those a little bit later in the uh, how-to section on how to tie them up and things like that. As far as tackle that you, as far as like rods and reels that you would need for fishing for Manina, um, you know, a, a decent inshore fishing combo is great. Here I got a seven foot East Coast Sports rod and I've got a 3,000 size pin battle reel. This would be a great combo for that kind of fishing. Um, you want to spool it up like 15 pound braid or say 12 pound test mono. Um, with the braid you can certainly cast much further so you can stay a little bit further off the fish and still manage to catch them. Uh, one thing you want to remember is that bonita usually feed on a faster moving bait. A lot of times you'll have bonita and bluefish mixed together. And if you reel slow with your bait, you'll catch a bluefish. If you reel fast with your bait, you'll catch bonita. So you want to remember to keep Keep, keep your baits moving quite a bit because if you start catching a lot of bluefish, you'll know that you need to speed up your bait. Uh, sometimes Benita just want the baits to fall, and you know that'll be a, you know at times that'll be the way to catch them. But usually you want to fish your baits fast. Um, 
when you're trolling baits like the uh, the crystal minnows, you want to do four or five miles an hour uh, along with the Clark spoons. The best way that I've found to troll crystal minnows is to drop them out, say 20, 30 foot behind the boat, speed up until they jump out of the water, and then back off of here. So you're pulling that bait just as fast as you can without it hopping out. And that's one of the best ways to figure out what speed to troll your crystal minnows. Um, you also want to remember that bonita are leader shy at times. So you want to make sure that you use fluorocarbon leaders. I prefer 30 pound fluorocarbon over any other type of leader material. Try to do away with the clips, try to do away with the swivels because that will detract from just trying to catch these fish. Um, sometimes you have false albacore mixed in with the bonita. False albacore are not good to eat. Bonita are good to eat. The easiest way to tell the difference is look for teeth. If you don't have a problem sticking your hand in the mouth of the fish and getting your hooks out, it's probably a false albacore. If you are not going to put your hands in that mouthful of teeth, it's a bonita. So remember, if it can eat you, you can eat it. That's one of the best ways to remember. There's some different structures on the, the lateral lines and sweeping lines, but the easiest way to tell is with the teeth. Um, false albacore not good to eat, but they are a really good fight. Now, at the tail end of the bonita run, you're going to see Spanish mackerel starting to mix in with them, and usually good sized Spanish mackerel. So as the bonita start to peter out a little bit, the Spanish mackerel fishing will start to heat up. And you know that's a lot of times a year when we'll start catching those big five and six pound Spanish mackerel. Uh, that have come in in the springtime, and they're usually here in good numbers too. Hopefully it'll be the same way this year. Um, so on the uh, tackle section, I'll show you guys some of that in just a minute. Got Thanks. The latest information, Coast Guard, or Charter Boat Cruise, could be the kid down at the... Here we are at some of the tackle that I'm going to show you guys for today. I'm going to do a little bit of a later, uh, another video a little bit later uh, to put on the tail end of this about how to tie them up and a little bit closer to look at these baits. Um, here we've got the new Yozuri Crystal Minnow. If you'll notice it's got a big deep lip on it, helps it dive. This is a great bait for trolling. Um, at times Benito will hit top water baits, so uh, make sure you've got something like that, uh, like a, uh, a skitter walk or something like that that matches that about that size. It's a great bait. And um, we'll uh, come on down here. Here's the heart of a lot of Spanish mackerel and bonita fishing. Um, one of our favorite baits that we've got here is the electric chicken diamond jig. Um, I'll show you guys that a little bit later, but it's just pink and green diamond jig. That was one of our top producers last year for bonita. Uh, one of the other really good baits are Don's jigs. Uh, they're just a old, old school tinsel jig. Now, sometimes bonita get keyed in on hatchet fish which a lot of people don't know about, but if you've caught some bonita in the spring, you've seen them cough up these weird looking fish that are, they're real wide body, but they're really narrow. And sometimes they'll get keyed on those and they don't hit the diamond jigs that are shaped more like a uh, glass moon. So you might want to try a rattle trap, which these are a little bit of a wider body and they'll, they'll jump on those pretty good. Um, shore lures are a good way to go. Sting silvers are a good way to go, but you just always want to try to remember to match the size bait that you're seeing in the water or that the fish are coughing up. And, um, you know, those are real good baits along with gotcha plugs, of course, the old standby, um, redhead, white body, electric chicken. Those are some of my favorite baits for uh, catching bonita and false albacore. Of course, Hopkins spoons, cast masters, all kinds of things that look like the glass minnow will work really well for bonita. I've never tried bait fishing for bonita. I'm sure there would be something that would work, but I've, I've never really uh, tried it out. If you cut your engine off while you're around a school, sometimes those minnows will be looking for cover and run right up underneath your boat. The bonita know that. And I've had times when I've had bonita actually ramming into my boat while they were chasing um, glass minnows. Now, if you've got your engine running, that won't usually happen. So just kind of drift up, get up to the school, cut your engine off, and kind of sit there and drift and try to be quiet while you're fishing these schools of Bonita. At times, they're, they're running a whole lot. They're breaking here, they're breaking there, and you kind of might have to chase them down a little bit. But still, try to remember to not, come, not ever go through breaking fish, and you'll have a whole lot better luck. 
So guys, come on down to Topsail Island and check us out. Uh, the Bonita Run should be here soon. Keep an eye out for my fishing reports and you'll know exactly when it starts. Sign up for our email reports and uh, you'll get a red, red hot alert email that says that the Bonita showed up. You can send a request to sales at eastcoastsports.com. But uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll throw up the how-to uh, tackle section here. King soon. Mackerel and the Blues are running all along the coast. Talk about fishing. You can't give the fish away. Everybody's lucky. October and the moon. Hi folks, Captain Chris here with uh, East Coast Sports Tackle Tips section. I was going to show you guys how to uh, get rigged up for the Bonita. Um, probably my best producer is the Diamond Jig. Uh, it's a very inexpensive lure as well. Um, this is the Electric Chicken one. This, this is one that we've had the best luck on for the past few years. It's got green and pink on it, if you'll notice. And uh, we get it made by Blue Water Candy. And... Uh, you know, when you see the fish, just run up there, cast it in there amongst them, and let it fall just a little bit, but then start reeling. And uh, reel at a pretty decent clip, and you'll usually be rewarded. At times, they want it to just fall, but usually reeling will do a lot better. Um, another good lure is the Don's Jig. It doesn't quite cast quite as far as the Diamond Jig does, but uh, it usually will catch fish a little bit better but I, I like being able to reach the fish from far away just so I don't spook the school out. And usually when they're taking this, they'll take this, but I have had times when the Don's Jig worked better than the, uh, than the uh, Diamond Jig. Um, another good bait would be uh, just about any kind of topwater bait that's kind of small. This is a uh, Rapala Skitter Walk, and uh, they generally go to the motion more so than the color. And, uh, you know, this would be a good way to be able to catch some of those Bonita on topwater bait if you want to have a good blow up. Um, Another good bait, especially like, well for trolling, would be uh, the Ozuri Crystal Minnows. If you notice, it's got a big lip on here that helps it dive. So you can troll it at a pretty good pace. Um, what you'd want to do is uh, you know, just kind of speed up, or drop it out the back of the boat 20, 30 foot, speed up until it jumps out of the water, and back off just a hair. Now, if they're not tracking straight, like a lot of crankbaits do out of the box, sometimes you might have to adjust it. What you would want to do is uh, not, not use a pair of dykes, but a, a pair of regular pliers uh, or needleless pliers is bend that eye one way or the other to try to make him track a little bit truer. And uh, a lot of times you can get it zeroed in, and, and that'll be a good way to be able to uh, you know troll for the troll for the bonita. Um, another good bait, of course, is the old standby Clark spoon and planer, uh, like you would use for Spanish mackerel. You can substitute a weight. Uh, just troll and wait for the uh, planer if you don't need to get that deep. And um, both both these baits, you want to troll about five, anywhere from four four to seven miles an hour. You know, just kind of find out what the fish want that day, and um, you know, you'll, you'll certainly have good luck. Of course, if you're going to be using a number one planer, it's kind of hard to use a real light trout rod. You'll want to use more like a live bait king mackerel rod to pull these guys. Something that uh, you'll be able to uh, pull them with. Um, fluorocarbon is usually a must. For Bonita, at times they do get leader shy, so you want to make sure that uh, you keep clips and swivels and all that stuff away. Um, I generally use 15 pound uh, Power Pro on most of my reels. I do like the new Super Slick. Um, I'll show you a few knots that we use when we're uh, when we're doing our when we're tying our baits on. Um, the first knot that I like to use, I think it's called a trilon trilene knot. Uh, you don't generally do this with braid. You will do this with mono, but I'm just using the braid so that you can, guys can see it. Is uh, Go ahead and put a loop in your line, just like that, an overhand loop. Slip your bait on, just like that. And then go back inside this loop three times. Kind of hard to do with braid, I guess. Three times like that. Then make that knot kind of small, snig it, snug it, and trim it off. And that's a good bait. I mean, that's a good uh, knot to use for tying your lures on with monofilament. Um, with braid, I would probably just suggest a regular fisherman's knot, you know, where you wrap it around like six times. That'd be a good way to go. Um, when you're tying braid to, uh, to fluorocarbon, uh, which I know you can't really see the fluorocarbon in my hand here because it is so invisible. But it's a great way to, great, great. That's a good thing. Um, you want to use an Albright knot, 
a PR knot or uh, something like that. Double uni knots work good too. Um, it makes a small knot, you know, especially the uh, Albright and the uh, the Albright and the double uni knot. They make a small knot that you can pass through your guides pretty easily. You want to make your leaders just a little bit longer than the fish you're catching. So if you're catching a bonita that say uh, 18 inches long, you want to make your leaders about 24. Uh, just so that you you know don't make them too long because it makes it difficult to cast. But you want to make your leaders just a little bit longer than the fish you're trying to catch, so you don't get tail whipped. But 30 pound fluorocarbon is a great way to go. So guys, if you've got any questions about any of these baits on how to use them, just send me an email. I'll throw my email address right up here so you guys can see it. And uh, Chris at EastCoastSports.com is a good way to go. But um, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to our tackle and tips section. And uh, come on down and see us, East Coast Sports. Have a great day.